from the smallest ultralight to the largest passenger jet, from the new student pilot to the veteran airline captain, we are all affected by weather. How we are affected depends on the type of aircraft we fly, our experience level, and the equipment we have on board. No pilot can go very far in aviation without a good understanding of weather. It was like that in the early days of flying, and it will probably always be that way. Recently, large-scale changes have been made to the ways we forecast, observe, and report the weather. Weather observations are available from many airports. Each hour, a qualified weather observer compiles a weather report by taking readings of atmospheric pressure, temperature, humidity, wind direction, speed and gust information, as well as subjectively reporting cloud conditions, visibility, and precipitation occurrence in type. We used to get all our weather observations from humans. Now we also have AWOS, the Automated Weather Observation System. AWOS is essentially a set of sensors that electronically collect weather data. The data is then compiled by a processor into a standard weather report. Temperature, humidity, pressure, and wind information are measured by the same instrumentation that the human weather observer uses. Sky condition, visibility, and precipitation type are measured by electronic instrumentation rather than subjectively reported. The weather report from an AWOS is of sufficient quality and quantity to allow for the production of a complete airport weather forecast. In the old days, forecasters used existing conditions, precedents, local knowledge, their experience, and some might say a little bit of witchcraft. Now, AWOS gives the forecaster more solid information to work with. And AWOS is on the job all the time, unlike human observers, who normally had many other tasks that kept them from looking out the window as often as pilots might have liked. More information on AWOS is available in the AIP Canada publication. If you're still puzzled, your Regional Aviation Safety Officer can help you. Part of the changes in weather reporting also include moving away from the era of FTs, Terminal Forecast, SAs, Routine Weather Reports, and FAs, Area Forecasts. These were North American style formats which used different terminology than those in other parts of the world. Thus pilots flying between the continents often had trouble deciphering the codes and this did not make flying any safer. Now the world has been standardized around acronyms like TAFs, METARs, and SPECIES. A TAF is a terminal area forecast. A METAR is a routine weather report, and a SPECI is what the acronym implies, a special weather report. There are major differences in the ways the information is presented in the old and new systems. These differences are fully explained in the AIP Canada. While weather forecasts from AWOS or humans are usually pretty accurate, we shouldn't be complacent. Continuously comparing the forecasts of the weather we experience as we cruise along is a mark of professionalism in the air. It is also an extremely effective method of accident prevention. We should always take off with a plan A and a plan B. Plan B is for when the en route weather or the weather where we want to land is worse than the forecast. It's why the regulations require an alternate airport for IFR flight. But even if we are VFR and the weather is forecast to remain that way, we should have an alternate airport in mind just in case. Runways sometimes close for totally unexpected reasons, such as the aircraft ahead of you blowing a tire and coming to rest at the intersection of the only two available runways. Many airplane incidents occur every year because their pilots didn't understand the weather. Either they didn't interpret the forecast correctly, or they did not link what they saw out the window with the weather system described in the forecast. If you're IFR in a suitably equipped airplane, you generally have more options available. VFR pilots have to be more alert to weather conditions that don't match the forecast and be ready to implement Plan B if the Plan A weather looks to be falling apart. For a VFR pilot, flying in cloud is definitely a bad idea. So is trying to squeeze the airplane into a small gap between the clouds and the trees. These endeavors invariably end in an accident. Continued VFR flight into deteriorating weather is a phrase often used by the Transportation Safety Board and one that could be easily avoided with a simple 180-degree turn. One cause of such tragedies is the well-known get-home-itis, the urge to get home, to work, or to an appointment. The weather doesn't care if we have to be somewhere. Trying to beat the weather when neither the pilot nor the airplane is equipped to do so is simply bad judgment. Weather. Like change, weather is a constant in aviation. It is always there and it must be dealt with. We have to understand forecasts interpret reports, and compare them with what we see outside to develop a plan that will let us safely complete the flight. Sometimes that means going to our alternate. However, in such cases, the alternate is much better than the alternative.
I'm Mike Dwyer, inviting you to return next week to fly with us through the overcast. <laughs>